the shipwrights of Axis, the faction that loves to hand out gift cards to almost any non-fighter ship in the game. I promise you, this one is going to be interesting. So in this video, I will go through this faction's abilities and I will share my thoughts on each of them. First, let's talk about their starting units. So they start with a carrier, three infantry, one dreadnought, one destroyer, two fighters and a space dock. And the homeworld is a five resource planet and zero influence. The starting fleet is not exactly overwhelming, but it is enough to gain control of three planets and two systems, just like in my example here. And I think this is just fine because this faction can use their commodities to get access orders in play to produce even more ships. And I will of course get back to this a little later in the video. First, let's talk about this faction's weaknesses, which is, in my opinion, their faction technologies. They are terrible. So let's cover those first, so we can move on to some of the interesting stuff. The first one is called Rift Engines, and it requires one blue technology to research. After you activate a system, you may exhaust this card to choose one ship you control and roll a die. On a result of one to three, remove that ship from the game board, on a result of 4 to 10, apply plus 2 to that ship's move value during this tactical action. Why would you spend 4 resources and a command token on basically researching a gravity rift? Yes, you get plus 2 to a ship's movement value, but you will still risk losing that ship if you roll 1 to 3. So you cannot rely on that extra ship arriving where you need it to be. So in my opinion, this technology is a complete waste of resources. And the second faction technology is called Emergency Deployment, and it requires three yellow technologies to get. And then we get an action. Exhaust this card to place or move one of your space docks onto a planet you control that does not contain a space dock. Yes, it is of course convenient to have an extra way to get your space docks out, especially if you want to score some of the structure objectives. And yes, I could also see a need for being able to move a space dock. I just don't see how often I will need that. And since this technology requires three yellow technologies to get, then I simply don't think it is worth the effort. And now let's talk about the mech, the Forge Tender. You may treat a space dock on this planet as if it has production five. And besides that, it's a completely normal mech with sustained damage, cost two to produce, and it hits on a 6 and above. Yes, there is a synergy between the mix and the emergency deployment faction technology. The one where we could move space docks from one planet to another. And then we can use the mix to increase the production capacity to 5 if it is a low resource planet. But I don't think I would produce the mix to use this ability. I would simply produce them to get those extra strong ground forces out there. Next, we have the faction abilities, and I think these are truly interesting, because they make me want to play as the shipwrights of Axis. The first faction ability is called Military Industrial Complex. After you gain or replenish commodities, you may spend a number of commodities equal to the combined cost listed on any number of Axis order cards in your reinforcements to place those cards in your play area. You cannot give your commodities to other players as part of a transaction. And we are a 5 commodities faction here. And as I just read, we cannot trade these for trade goods with other players. Instead, we spend the commodities to place these access order cards in our play area. And there are two of them for cruisers, two of them for dreadnoughts, two of them for destroyers, and two of them for carriers. And as you can see in the left corner here, a Dreadnought only costs 3 commodities to place in our play area instead of 4 resources to produce it. So for our 5 commodities we could for instance place these 3 access order cards in our play area. And when we have done that then it says at the end of your turn exhaust this card to place one carrier from your reinforcements in a system that contains your ships and one of your command tokens. So we have to move out first and then we can use the access order to reinforce that system. And then it says, 
at the start of the status phase, if this card is exhausted, return it to the access player's reinforcements. And then we can basically use it again. But there is also another faction ability called Arms Dealers. When a player negotiates a transaction, they may exchange access order cards in their play area as part of that transaction. You cannot resolve the effects of access order cards. So instead of trading away commodities, we can trade away access orders instead. And I think we can fairly easily sell a carrier access order for, for instance, two trade goods. Or we could possibly sell them for even more, simply because we get to place those units somewhere in the galaxy, outside systems, with our space stocks. Trade and commodities are extremely important for the ship rights of access. So I think we need to take the trade strategy card as often as possible. And if someone else takes it, then we need to negotiate a transaction with them so we get replenished anyways. Because we want these access orders out in play. So where the Mintech coalition is a little annoying with their pillage faction ability, then I think the ship rights of access is way more interesting when it comes to trade among the players. If you're looking for a new board game, you might as well use one of the links in the description below because I have whip shops in both North America and in Europe there. And in this way, we can reduce the shipping costs. You will get the game that you want and support this channel at the same time. Now let's have a look at the promissory note. It's called Industry Secrets. When one or more of your units use production, place this card face up in your play area to apply plus four to the production value of those units and reduce the combined cost of the produced units by one for this use of production. At the start of the status phase, return this card to the access player. So the promissory note is more or less just a war machine action card. But if there is a faction at the table with a low production capacity in their home system, then I think this is an easy sell. Not because of the production discount, but because of the increased production capacity. Next up is the agent. The shipmonger, sh sh eh, you pronounce it. It's an action. Exhaust this card to choose one player. That player may place one cruiser or one destroyer from their reinforcements in a system that contains their ships. Then, if you choose another player, gain two commodities. The agent is a must use in every single round. You can either give it to another player and then they can place a destroyer or a cruiser and you will get two commodities or you can use it on yourself and get a cruiser. But for those two commodities, you can get four destroyers or two cruisers out. So no matter what, you can get more ships out for free in every single round. Next up is the commander, the designer, Chesupisk. And to unlock him, we need to have four access order cards of different unit types in one or more players' play areas. And I believe this requires a little bit of both planning and timing to do. But when we do, then it says, after a player resolves an access order card, you may spend six resources to gain the corresponding unit's unit upgrade technology. Just like the agent, I find the commander extremely useful. And since we start with the AI development algorithm, then we will get a production discount based on how many unit upgrades that we have. So if I play the ship rights of access, I don't think I would spend any resources on researching other technology. I would simply produce more units instead. And I would especially go for the Dreadnought 2 unit upgrade because there is a strong synergy with that and our flagship that I will talk about next. The Bearer of Heavens. After this ship produces one or more hits during a round of space combat, you may repair one ship you control in this system. And besides that, it has sustained damage, it costs 8 to produce, it rolls 2 dice and hits on a 7, it got movement 1, and capacity 3. So a small fleet with our flagship, a couple of dreadnoughts, a carrier, some extra fighters for soaking hits, and then I think you are pretty much unstoppable. And lastly, let's have a look at the hero, and to unlock him, or her in this case, the demi queen Mitzkt. We need to have three scored objectives, as always. And when we do, we have an action. Purge this card and give one or more access order cards in your play area to one or more players. For each access order card you give to another player, 
you may force that player to give you one promissory note from their hand. With the hero, I can imagine a scenario where we have all eight access orders in our play area and we start handing them out to other players to try and pull some support for the thrones. Of course, they can place a lot of free units if we do so, but does that really matter if we already won the game? I think this faction has some really fun abilities. My only worry is that they simply get to place way too many units out on the game board so that all the players will have huge fleets standing still and just holding each other in check. But they still look like a lot of fun, and the next time I play Discordant Stars, I hope I can choose this faction. Please support the channel by becoming a Patreon member or simply subscribing. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.